All right, welcome to The Lowdown, brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sarney, and joining me is a man who, on Friday, was too good, he was too sharp, and now he's the two-time British middleweight champion, smiling away, Denzel Bentley. Look at you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks, man. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, you feeling good? I mean, how many how many times have you watched it back? 30 to 40? 40 to 50? What are we you looking know, at? You know... <laughs> It's not on YouTube, so I, I struggled to find it. And then oh. I finally realised Channel 5 got an app and I didn't know. So I downloaded that app and I've watched it twice in one day because it was quite late when I found out. So I'm going to go back home and keep watching it again. But I missed you guys, man. I missed you guys, man. I had a whole fight week about seeing no one from, from the Queensbury stable, apart from Matt. So thank you, Matt, for turning up to that every press conference or any, any media obligations. And Simon Legg for turning up for fight night. So, yeah. But other than that, I missed you guys, man. Good. Well, you look. You'll you'll be back with us, mate. You'll be back with us, and you'll be bringing that shiny gold Lonsdale belt, all fourteen and a half grand, I believe it's worth. I think that's coming back, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's what they were saying all over the um, commentary and stuff. So yeah, fourteen and a half grand. So um, you've watched it back twice. Um, yeah. How uh, how are you feeling about it? What are your reflections on it? Have you seen anything different? Did it? Does it look different to how it felt in there? No, I, I, I still I still think the fight went how I felt on the night. Um, uh, the early rounds were his, but not all not all of them were his. I think I won a few of the early rounds, and I won the majority of the later rounds. And I, and I felt that in the fight, and I don't think it was a split decision. I still don't think it's a split decision. And I think one sixteen one twelve was fair. One fifteen one thirteen was fair. But they didn't count my knockdown, and if they did, it would have been a little bit wider. So you can't complain about a wide scorecard because the fight was close. They were they were close rounds, but I feel like every every round he won was close. Every round I won was wide or clear, I should say rather. But I didn't think it was a good fight, and I enjoyed it. But I I don't think it was a split. I don't see how any judge can give him seven rounds. But it it was it was a nice close fight. It was a nice you know back and forth fight. That actual uh, that knockdown. Um, at the time, I would imagine you felt different to what you did watching it back later and seeing the replay, seeing it clearly touched down. Um, how do you feel about the whole knockdown not being counted by the ref or, or anything like that? You know what? If if it, if it um, if that was the decided factor of the fight and I lost because of that, I would have been pissed. But it wasn't, so it's was like whatever. I know I knocked him down. Uh, he knows he went down. He touched the canvas. And by the way, he's a good fight. I'm not taking no shots at him, but he knows he went down. So I'll just, I'll just add that to my resume of fighters that I put down. So Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, he's um, on there, mate. official. Exactly. So um, he was a tough guy, though. He wasn't trying to go anywhere. I was trying to stop him, but it's tough. But, um, yeah, so when he went down, I just carried on throwing because he got up so quickly. Yeah. And I thought maybe his knees buckled, he didn't touch down. But then now I thought, like, if I had stepped back and pointed it out, would the ref have counted or would I have looked like an idiot and let him back in the fight and let him up the hook? So I, I don't regret what I've done. I kept throwing punches and he managed to weather that storm and the bell went. It was right at the end of the round. So it's all good. When the scorecards were being read out, though, did were you at all worried that it might be a factor? Was it on your mind at all? Because it was on my mind. I tweeted out, I hope that knockdown isn't a factor here when we go to the scorecards. As you say, he did well early and you, you come on very strong. I thought you clearly won the fight, but you were on a rival promoter's show. Uh, you know, and you just never know how things are going to play out. And, you know, when you hear, hear that one of the judges scored it for him um, and your knockdown wasn't counted, was it on your mind at all? Yeah, a little bit, because I was thinking to myself, no, 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 not with a knockdown, but when they said split, I thought, oh, my days, they're going to do me. I thought they're going to do me. I thought, oh, man. Then they said, they read the scorecards and they read they read um, his, his obviously, his score and then they read my score the last one, which was, his, his was 115-114, the man was 115-113 in the last two. But when they said 115, I thought, oh, that's too similar to his one. So I, I thought he had it. So I've turned over to look at the uh, announcer, to look at his mouth to see what, what kind of letters he was reading out. And he said my name, and I was like, yeah, rightfully so. But I was happy that, you know, there weren't no funny business. Cause, because going into the fight, I didn't expect any funny business because I know it's a survival promoter show, whatever, but listen, we're both, we're not, it's not like I'm going to another country. We're two yeah. British fighters fighting for the British title with British officials. There should be no bias. I know he's a home fighter, but they're building him and the whole thing has been about him. But that's fine, have all the shine. I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm quite easy. I'm chilled. Like, you know me, like, the camera's not on me. I'm not going to make kick and fuss about it. I'll keep the camera, bro. I just want to fight. Someone was saying the other day that, I've, my, my, that domestically I fought a lot of guys. And I feel like they feel like my CV is a bit underrated. And I think that's just because 
I lost the cash instead of beating him. But at the end of the day, if you look at the guys I fought since lockdown till now, I've been in, I've been in hard fights since then. Like even with Mick Hall, people don't give Mick Hall credit, and like, and I'm not just trying to give him credit because I fought him, but people don't give him credit because you know um, he he wasn't one of the guys that were boasted about that. Like, oh, he's one of the top guys. But in his time, when he was box, when he was you know fully fair box, I know he had a bit of time before he boxed me, but he only lost to Jack Arnold, who was a British champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tough and guy. He lost tough. To Jack Arnold, tough, tough, tough guy, tough guy, tough guy. And, I was, and Jack Arnold didn't stop him. They fought twice. I, I I got him out of there. I didn't go this. I got him out of there in a, in a very tough fight coming off lockdown. I wasn't my fittest. I wasn't in the best shape. First fight coming from lockdown. The gym's just opened a month before the fight, the, the shows were allowed to happen. Do you know what I mean? So it, it was it was difficult in, in 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 a lot of senses because I wasn't in the best shape I could have been in. Lockdown took a lot out of everyone, not just me. And then I, straight after that, I got into a, a headphone fight. Yeah. The first one with with not with not with not a a long amount of time, even though I was already in the gym because of Mick Hall. So I think the fight was being discussed and before we know it, it's like two and a half weeks, oh yeah, you're there. Took that, that's the type of guy I am, I think I'm bad, <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> but then boom, then the next one, I was like, say no more, let's go again, November, plenty of time to get ready, all the right sparring, everything was perfect. And you saw what I'd done. And then oh, after that, we rushed the cash, come up from Ghana, oh, all in the high and that, thinking all i got to do is show up. And you know, whatever happened with cash, happened with cash. Um, I had Sam Evans on a the, on the couple of weeks notice as well because Lennox Clark pulled out and 10 and one guy, he stopped working. He put, this is his moment, fighting for a British or he, fight, he went from fighting for the British to fighting a former British opponent, opponent or sorry, former British champion. Still the same motivation. Got him out of there and free and then straight to Linus for the British again, an undefeated fight like that. Come on, you can't tell me I tried to take gimme fights so I tried to swerve things or I'm not about that life. I'm about that life. I'll see you. I'll see you. And I'm certainly not going to be anyone trying to tell you that you're not about that life. Um, but what, what, I'll, what I'll ask you, Denzel, you, you've been in these fights, like the Heffron fight, right? I remember the first Heffron fight where it looked like you were really thinking about it. You were thinking about pacing yourself. Uh, have I got the tank to take me all the way? But people yeah. have said before, you've, you've taken rounds off, right? And it looked like this fight, all that experience, everything that you've been through, Sort of, you just look like a much smarter fighter in there, a, a fighter confident in who he is. Am I right? Yeah, no, definitely. I'm definitely confident in, in who I am and what I can do. Def, definitely smarter. So, um, all Campbell working on things, working on things, and it was like whatever works is what we're going with. So, like, we had a little, we had a game plan, and or or what we wanted to do rather than the game plan because it's, I think the whole game plan thing is like it's hard to stick to a game plan. You know what I mean, for any fighter. But we had we had an idea of what we wanted to do. In the first round, we was going for it. Ring was tiny, by the way. First round, we were going for it, and I and I felt that he was taking he was putting a lot into his work. I said, "This guy's putting a lot into his work. He's either this fit is going to keep this up for twelve rounds, or he thinks he's going to get me out of there early." So I think after the the first round of the first two, I just slowed right down. I said, "You know what? I'm not going to match his pace. I'm going to slow down, catch his shots." I'm, I'm going to keep throwing so he knows I'm there. Every time he's inside, I'm going to let my hands go, but I'm not going to put as much effort as he, as he is because I, I want to try and stop him later. That's what I had in my mind. I, I wanted to stop him late. So I felt the effort he was putting in the effort. The, the minute I felt a slight change in the pace, even if it wasn't a lot, the minute I felt a slight change in the pace, that's when I knew, all right, I'm picking it up from here because he's done. And that's what I've done in that fight. And that's why I finished so strong. And he ended up, you know, he was a bit tired. Now, there's there's been a bit of talk about a rematch, mainly from their side. I think it's a rematch would suit them a lot. Um, but yeah. wh- where's your head at or, on on doing it again? Uh, I told him I, I, I'll do it again with him, but in the future. So like when we're at a, a higher level, if he gets there, I'm not saying he can't, but if he gets there, I plan to get there. So if he gets to a higher level, then he's like, hey, look, I'm here now, and it's for a bigger accolades, a bigger title, and more money. I, I'll definitely take it but I think if we rematch now or then or whatever I think in the rematch I'd definitely win by a stoppage this time What makes you think you can beat him by a stoppage if you were to do it again? Because I know I was hurting him and I'm not going to let him away I'm not going to let him go he was very good with his movements and when he got hurt he just moved around moved around and I was maybe doing a bit of head hunting but now I've got an idea of of how he fights I've never shared a ring with him so I had to figure him out on the map now I kind of know his style um I'll have a different approach or a better approach, I should say. But like I said, it's not a full conclusion that I'd stop him, but I, I, I think I would. But he's a tough guy because I did hit him with some big shots and 
took it. It's all about timing, though, isn't it? I mean, this, this fight was ordered quite a while ago for, I believe, the Southern Area title, and you both went your separate ways. You've done it for the British title. You've had a great fight. You could go your separate ways. You could come back again together for a world title or an eliminator. Exactly. It, it's, it's timing. No, exactly, 100%, exactly that. And I just feel like I've been in a lot of fights that's like, like well, I've been in a lot of exciting fights. I, I think I'm an exciting fighter, but I don't go in there and take mad punishment exciting. But I just think all my fights are like very nicely matched and even. So I think anyone like, for example, well, part of, well, the cash fight, I lost in three rounds, but that's the part I'd like to rematch because if I keep doing well, it just looks better on paper and it'll be nice to get a rematch. Heath probably had a rematch straight away. If he was still at middleweight, people will still be calling for another fight of us, like a, like a third fight because the first one was a draw. I won the second. People were calling for a third fight. And now this fight, people are saying, oh, like, they'd love to see it again. So I think that just shows my style is very entertaining and my style is very, you know, enjoyable to watch. I saw you tweet out a kind of staunch defence of, of the Peacock Gym, who had a great 24 hours with yourself becoming two-time British middleweight champion and Ellis Soro winning the boxer tournament. Um, what, what was that? My brother. Yeah, look, mate, he's he's the man. He looked he looked <laughs> the man. So good on him. Good good That's on both of you. Serious fighter right there. Hundred yeah, percent. I love what I love the you interview as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop a good guy, man. I like that guy, man. But um, people just like to talk shit, man. Sorry to swear, but people like to talk so much rubbish. Like it's like, you know, obviously after after Dan was being so big up, everyone for oh, people da, 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 da. after Dan lost, it's like oh, people just going downhill, and it's like. First of all, why, why, why are you happy that we're getting that, you know, someone's taking a loss and the gym's not doing us so well? And why do you want us to go down so, so badly? I don't understand. What is your issue with the Peacock Gym? I think everyone there is, is nice people. No one offends anyone. No one's talked rubbish online or slaughters anyone. Like, everyone's just all cool people. But people just like to talk rubbish. So the Peacock Gym are losing a bit. Dan lost. Okay, he left. And I lost. Uh, uh, Chris lost. It's like, oh, oh Peacock Gym, they don't know what they're doing up there. They're, they're, they're trash. Oh, the trainers. Everyone needs to leave and get a new trainer and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it happens. People win and people lose. Name the best trainer in the world and you can pick the best fighter that's lost. Did anyone say leave then? No one said leave. No one was talking rubbish. Um, but because most of these coaches and all these guys, all these trainers are, you know, in the limelight and they're giving interviews and they're giving breakdowns on fights and stuff, they show a bit of their knowledge. So everyone thinks they know what they're talking about. Martin and Ray ain't camera people. And even the rest of the guys, Andre, Adam, whoever it is in the gym, they're not, they're not camera guys. They're not going to come in the camera and start talking about fights that doesn't concern their fighters. And start talking about other fighters or start talking about this happens, that happens, or break down or give any sort of breakdown on, on fighting styles or anything. They're not going to do that. So people don't understand their knowledge. Or they, don't, they don't see what these guys know. So everyone thinks, everyone just assumes they don't know nothing. You hear a, a little 10 second clip in the corner of maybe some words of encouragement and you're saying, oh, you know, giving no tactics. I tell you what, sometimes in that corner, you don't need tactics. Sometimes you actually need a bit of encouragement. Like, you're just down in the cards here. Someone's getting battered up from pillar to post. What are you going to say? For your jab. Come on, you're going to say, listen, you've got to dig deep here. You know what I'm saying? Like, get on your back, move for a bit. Once you recover, then you go back to your box. But you don't hear the rest of the, the corner work. You hear about five, ten seconds of it. And you just hear that little bit of encouragement. It was, oh, you don't know nothing. You don't know this. You don't know that. Blah, 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 blah. You can't overcomplicate things. These guys are... They're yeah, amazing guys. They know their boxing from head to toe. They've trained, especially Ray. I've been with him from, from the amateur. He, he has he takes his time out, trains with all the amateur boys. He comes in, knows his game. Martin's been training professional fighters for a very long time. He's had, he's had many fighters. He, some of them were with, were with Frank. He had the Oval. He had Alan Higgins. He had Ahmed from when I came to the gym. You know what I mean? All the ones before that, all champions. Uh, Larry, they've had they've had they've had good fighters. They know what they're doing, but because they're not on the camera talking away about other fighters or fight predictions or this and that. Everyone just assumes they don't know what they're doing. So I just have to say, look, are you going to give us credit now for us to be in back or for us having a good weekend or are you just going to keep talking shit about, oh, that gym's done that, I don't know what they're doing. I just, that's, that's it, really. This happens. This just happens all the time in boxing. I, I remember, like, Eddie Reynoso, right? He was trainer of the year for I don't know how long. He's, he's got Canelo, Oscar Valdez. Uh, he had Andy Ruiz in there at one point, Ryan Garcia. Suddenly... Some fighters have left, some fighters have taken L's, and he's useless. And that's what everyone's saying yeah. now. Maybe they should leave and all of that. They're calling him an overrated trainer. Bro, sometimes when you lose a fight, it has nothing to do with your trainer or your corner. It's all to do with you. You fought the fight, you fought the wrong fight. 
but listen, not taking shots at anyone, but the only person that should be blaming their trainer for every, for anything is Robbie Davis Jr. when Dominic Ingle said, don't turn back orthodox, stay south. <laughs> that's, the, no, that's not taking shots. That's just an example. I apologise if they're offended, but that's just an example. He's the only person that should be saying that. Other than that, you fought the fight. You know how you felt. Sometimes in the fight, you see things yourself. Make those adjustments yourself. You're not, your, 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 your coach isn't a control pad controlling you to do things in the fight. They give you advice and you work off that advice. That's it. That's all it's meant to be. They prepared you for everything else for the 12, six to 12 weeks you was in camp. You can't expect that much more from them in the corner, but to give you a little, advice, little bit of advice, remind you of things you're not doing or you're doing wrong, tweak up your thing a little bit. But other than that, figure, figure things out. If you're, if you're a smart fighter, you figure things out yourself and you go through the gears yourself. So what's next, Denzel Bentley? What have you, uh, what have you got in your mind? Obviously, what I want to hear is just like, I'm going to knock out this guy. I'm going to knock out this guy. I want to fight him. I want to fight him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm on. I'm on all of that anyway. And I am going to knock them out, whoever it is when I fight them. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, names, I'm always keeping an eye on, on the division. I'm always looking around to see what's good. And I've noticed that the division's opening up quite <laughs> suddenly. It's quite suddenly. I think Golovkin's about to retire soon, especially if he gets a Canelo fight next. Uh, Demetrius Andre has moved up to fight Zach Parker. Um, you're just waiting for him to officially vacate. Charlo's eventually going to go up. The division's wide open. All I know is I want to be in a position to fight for an eliminator or near enough a vacant title when that happens. So I'm, I want to push on forward and get some good fights and to help build my, my world ranking as I'm still ranked for the WBO. I was looking at the, um, at the WBO rankings. I... I'm not sure if it's been updated since the uh, since your last fight, but a couple of spots above you was Hamza Shiraz. Now he's obviously a Queensbury yeah. stable mate, and that for me that I saw that as something. Oh, maybe maybe they'll fight for like an eliminator or something like that down the line. What what do you think about a fight like that with something on the line? Uh, yeah, yeah, lovely. I've, I thought like I've said, my fights have been all competitive, challenging fights, so I welcome a challenge like Hamza Shiraz. But like you said, I think. It would be better for all parties, including promoters and fighters, for us to fight for an, at least an eliminator, at least an eliminator, a, a final eliminator, if, if it can be. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure he will work on that fight as well. So I'm, I'm open to that. I'm open to that. But I think now we've got to make sense of things. So if we're, if we're both ranked with WBO, let's work in the rankings and then make that fight for an eliminator. And then the next one can get a world title shot off that. I think that makes perfect sense. You said this. I saw you tweet that some people have been calling you out without atting you. Who's put a name on it? Who's been uh, who's been calling your name out? Uh, uh, Andy Fowler. He, he puts that out there that he wants he wants that fight, which is a good fight. And I saw Kieran Conway saying some rubbish as well. And I just have to at him. But I don't know. People are people are people in it. But yeah, that's the only two I've seen right now. But I was kind of hyped. You know how I get after a fight. <laughs> <laughs> the, king, the king's got a target on his back, mate. That's that you can expect this. Uh, you can expect this. Yeah, that's how it goes. It feels good though. It feels good though. I've forgotten about it just yesterday, so you know, it's all right. Um, tell me about Danny Dignam's he's taking on Janibek for I think it's the interim WBO middleweight title, the one that I'm not sure if Android's actually vacated it yet, but all signs are pointing towards him doing that, hence they're making this fight for the interim title. Uh, what do you think of Dignam's chances heading into this fight? Yeah, Dignam's a good fighter, man. I think he's a good fighter. He's, he's got um, as much chances as he believes in himself. As long as he believes in himself, he's, he's got a chance. I think Janabek's a good fighter. I've actually been watching Janabek as well, and he's a good fighter. I keep my eye on the division. There isn't, there isn't a fighter out there in my division that I, I, I don't know, really. That's like, you know, world, world... If they're not British, world contention kind of thing. But um, Janabek's a good fighter. Very, very, very good fighter. He's got power, quite slick. Um, beatable. Beatable. Uh, whether Danny could do it or not, we have to find out this weekend. And I think it's a good fight. And, uh, and as much as me and Danny are cool, and I like Dan and I, I like uh, Kevin Lee, and that, I, I would love the winner of that fight. I think that's, that's a great fight. I'd love the winner of that fight. And I think I, I think I um, match up well against Southpaws. I know I ain't fought any, but just going off sparring and stuff, um, I think I match up well against Southpaws. So I, I'd, I'd love to get the winner of that fight because essentially that's the world title shot. Quit. If you're cool and, and you're going to fight each other, you might as well fight each other at the pinnacle of the sport. So, yeah. When you um, 
when you think about yourself fighting for a world title and you, you look, you're doing all the right things to, to head that way, can you picture someone in the opposite corner as to who this is going to be the guy that I'm probably going to fight for a world title? Do you think you've just mentioned that person or is, it, is there someone else on your mind? I don't know, you know. As, like recently, I've been thinking about like fighting Janabek. I swear down, I, I just, I've, I've really liked that fight. I think it's a sick fight as well, and I think I fancy my chances against. But we have to see the outcome of this fight. I'm not just saying that because I feel like it's gonna uh, beat Danny or whatever. Danny you still got getting that fight, Danny. So, so um, Danny Dignam that is, but yeah. So when Dignam gets in there and fights, I just I'd like the winner. But I, I, I recently I've been I've been thinking about Janabek. I really like that fight. What What makes you think you match up well with Janabek then? I don't know, man. I just I've been watching him and I see a few things. I just don't think, and he is good, by the way. But I, just, I think I just think I can beat him, man. He's someone I've looked at, and I just think, yeah, I, I, I can beat this guy. Like we don't know how good he is as well, and that's the thing. We don't know how good he is. So he, he's fought people that, you know, he's meant to bang up. Like, um, I'm trying to think of someone he's fought that. Did he fight um, Rob Brown? I think yeah. I think he fought Rob Brown. He fought Endam. And Dan was the last one. Yeah. yeah. And Dan's quite old, though. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really yes. take that from Dan. But Rob Brandt's not. That, that's, that's, that is not a bad win. I think that's a good win, Rob Brandt. That's a good win. But and I haven't, like, he's, he's, on a, he's on a high, isn't he? He's, he's coming up. Rob, Rob Brandt's been in a few balls as well. He had, he had two tough bats from Morata. I can remember, yeah. So it's like, yeah, good win still. Yeah, good win. But I just think I can beat him. I think I'm better than Rob Brandt as well, anyway. But, um, and then them, so those are parts I take, but I, I think I could beat them a bit, man. So I'm just thinking, I can't really get out what I'm trying to say, but I think I can beat him. Yeah, well, look, look I, I would expect nothing less. Um, so you say we, we don't know how good Janny Beck is. Do we know how good Denzel Bentley is yet? No, don't neither. You don't, you don't, you don't. You don't. And that's a good point. So he probably sees me thinking he's a weasel. <laughs> <laughs> no. What what um what, what, what percentage? What percentage of, of Denzel Bentley do you think we've seen so far? Maybe 60%. I've been in a few tough fights. I think probably about 60%. All right. I think I could definitely level up more. I could definitely level up more. That's good to hear. Look, I want to see this other 40%. Um, and I want to see you fighting for some big titles. And then what what, what did Frank say to you, by the way? I know you had you were on the phone to him after your fight. Yeah, he just said congratulations, uh, a good win, and I should be in some big fights, um, you know, in the near future. So, you know, he's enjoying his time out now, and now when he gets back, we'll have a conversation and see what big fights he has planned. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, Denzel, before I let you go, is there anyone you wanna, anyone you wanna shout out, anyone you wanna thank? Let me know. Yeah, man. Shout out to, to my family, family and friends, everyone that supports me all the time. Back when it comes back to have shout out to my team, my old Peacock Gym, getting into names as long and then shout out my sponsors. My sponsors just look after me very well. They they you know ringside advanced um elite elite sports performance therapy in inner city scaffolding, reason beauty that does my hair, you know, keeps keeps it keeps it safe when I'm fighting. Um yeah man, yeah, yeah. I hope I ain't missed anyone out. Then I'll be in trouble. But <laughs> you will be we but can yeah, always film it again, yeah. you can get them all in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Denzel lovely speaking to you congratulations well done two time British middleweight champion and, 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 and empire 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 tape. empire, empire tape. best tape best tape in the building best tape in the world best tape in the world but yeah that was it empire they're new so that's why I almost slipped my mind but yeah empire. oh yeah what did you get like one of the graphics that they put out you know with your, your face on it like empire did they do that <laughs> um, yeah I got one of them yeah good I got one of them I got one of them Good, yeah, rightly so. <laughs> All right, well, shout out yeah, Empire. Yeah. Shout out Empire. I don't think they're sponsoring me, though, so other raps are available. Um, Denzel, lovely speaking to you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take that belt wherever you're going to take that belt. Take some photos. Keep the Insta story popping, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. And that's one, definitely.